energy and collaboration. Now I would like to move to the next topic. It is quite similar, but then I would like to learn about national level communication among different users of the databases. So um, now that I would like to invite those active uh, participants, um, if Heis is still here, um, and uh, if Joachim is still here, and then if Pablo is still here, they are all from Europe. And then first I would like to ask Pablo, if possible, uh, yes, yes, to talk alive, about... So okay, very... Hear you. Ah, okay, that's unfortunate. Sorry, Heis. Okay, then I will ask Pablo to uh, on the uh, communication mechanism, formal or formal, within the European countries. Pablo? I see the comments from Pablo that he has to leave, so uh, unfortunately that we cannot uh, have his comments. Then uh, I would ask you if you are here that talk about possible national level uh, community. Yes, thank you, Masami. I'm still here, so I can share my 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 experience with you. Um, I think we have two levels of info of communication. One is within Germany, and here it's very easy because my institution is the national focal point for all three databases. So this is my me who have to coordinate who, support, who submits which information to where. Uh, the other communication is between the 28 member states with regard to, with regard to the three different um, databases, applications, and so on. And here is, once again, we have a particular, uh, particular situation in the European Union. Since the um, authorization for the uh, food and feed use of genetically modified organisms or LMOs is done at the European level, this is information which uh, should be submitted by the, um, by the competent authority of the European Union, which is the JRC in Ispan. So here we have a clear, let's say, a sharing so the clear co competence which is divided according to the legal frameworks we're working in. Um, national decisions shall be submitted to the BCH and to the OECD by the different member states. The uh, EU-wide uh, authorizations, which is particularly in, in, of interest for the uh, food and feed use, they are submitted by the JRC. And here I will my intervention for the moment. Thank you very much, Joachim, for the very nice insights from your experience in the communication mechanism in uh, both Germany and also uh, your uh, wide uh, communication system. Um, I'm wondering if uh, Dorinton from Kenya, are you still online? Uh, can you share with us the Kenyan example on the communication mechanism? Hello. Then we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, with respect to the BCH, uh, which I'm the focal point, uh, as well as the, the the GMO platform, at least in that the communication is not a problem because it, both uh, are handled by me. I think the communication with the other stakeholders in Kenya that require the use of this facility is something that is of concern because uh, in our regulation system we need to work together with regulatory agencies. We also have uh, an enlisted roster of experts. Of course my own staff at the National Bar Safety Authority in, and as well as the researchers. So this group of people I think uh, there is really need at national level to expose them to the potential of this uh, database to enhance their work and uh, I think it's something that has not come out uh, clearly and uh, probably in the coming period we are going to try and see them on how they 
at resources and the possibility of linking these databases to our website, the National Bus Safety Clearing Hub. Uh, if it is possible to link to some of these websites, uh, then it will probably facilitate uh, their work as they help us in making our decisions. So I think from my view, the sensitization of our various stakeholders is, is very important. And if we can be allowed to have a link with it, these databases from our website, which most of these stakeholders use rarely, then enhance the usage of these facilities and of course it will be possible for them to uh, do their work more effectively because the data that you have in those databases are fairly I mean, uh, as accurate as it possibly can Thank you very much Thank you so much Dr. Rington. Uh, that was a very good information uh, about the communication mechanism at the national level and in Kenya. Um, I'm now wondering the Ernest uh, Ocampo from Uruguay, um, would you like to share with us your insights on this topic? Okay, thank you. Um, at, at, at the national level, I think that uh, one of the issues that we have found is that there is not, uh, I mean, in developing countries where, where we have been working, working in, in the BCH project, is that there is no, uh, there are no established uh, procedures to communicate between agencies. So the uh, lack of communication between uh, several different government agencies, and that uh, that is uh, that goes against the proper uses of these databases. Thank you so much. So there is um, a significant challenge at the national level in a communication. I think that we can learn from um, some um, some example uh, from other countries that we maybe uh, uh, incorporate some uh, working system in the communication mechanism in the future. Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Thank you so much, Anita, for sharing such um, um, information. It is very useful. Now I would like to pick some comments from Heis. Uh, he's, um, he's apologizing for not being able to provide an oral contribution, but then uh, saying that there are also nice examples of how, for instance, Germany and Netherlands worked on the US uh, database, and China and Netherlands on the GMDB database. So there are databases. Existing uh, with information also uh, mon uh, those that actually might not have been uh, authorized yet. So um, there are some other databases uh, used. Um, communication mechanism exists. Thank you, Hi. And then I'm reading from Shamila. 
images. Uh, uh, there are difficult points for the different platforms. And there is a need to establish a communication system for sharing and accessing relevant information. This is similar to the one that we heard from the Uruguay, um, uh, the earnest um, intervention, that uh, there is a strong need in some countries to establish the uh, communication mechanism, at least among those focal points of the uh, several databases. Um, any question from Peter that, that the, do you hear any kind of um, experiences from any countries that you are um, you have spoken with in the past that do you do you find any good um, terms of the communication mechanism Peter? Yeah, thanks. Um, I think uh, it's been a general observation uh, that we've made is that countries uh, which have been on uh, for quite a time now uh, developing um, uh, especially products or approving products for commercialization uh, of examples, but where they have been doing that um, uh, uh, in, on a relatively large scale, um, I think the experience and the communication tends to develop along with that uh, experience. And some of the countries who've been uh, uh, long involved in the process of commercialization, Canada, the US, um, are some that come to my mind um, are pretty uh, are very good at uh, the internal uh, communication. So I think a lot of it evo this evolves, um, as far as I can see, with experience on the topic. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, Giovanni, uh, the same question for you. That have you heard uh, about any good practices in terms of the communication mechanism at the national level? Yes, thank you, Masami. I think that uh, in the process uh, of the adoption of the Cartagena Protocol, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, resources were uh, invested uh, from uh, the donor countries and from the multilateral uh, uh, group of donors uh, through the, the Global Environment Facility. This uh, allowed uh, the uh, many countries to uh, undergo through a capacity building program, and these allowed the countries to develop their national biosafety framework by uh, talking to all of the different components of the government, including also the stakeholders uh, in their, their country. Uh, this brought to the uh, form creation of a national biosafety committee or similar type of institutions where uh, biosafety discussion happens in countries. And uh, that is definitely a place that, uh, where uh, a, a information happens. Now, of course, a limitation because uh, different stakeholders and uh, even within the same government there are different uh, uh, needs for this table sometimes uh, is not uh, uh, able to, it's not, uh, I say, most successful in, uh, in uh, creating consent, but still in sharing this information, I think uh, those uh, mental body that uh, were created through uh, the implementation are all uh, a fantastic way of uh, sharing information. And uh, also, I'd like to mention the fact that uh, the Cartagena Protocol uh, has an obligation on parties to, to involve the public into the decision making. And therefore, uh, a fantastic uh, as a, a effort was done by many countries uh, to create awareness uh, and also to somehow, to certain degree, involve the public into their decision. And therefore, they were somehow forced to share, to share more information, to uh, uh, share more uh, the, 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 the process that brought to the option of biotechnology product in their country. So I think these are all very good uh, example of uh, um, I say, uh, communication among intergovernmental bodies or with the public uh, that comes up from a process still ongoing. Thank you, Masami. Thank you so much, Giovanni. Uh, that is a very good point. Um, now that I would like to quickly uh, uh, conclude the session, uh, this discussion topic number two.
uh, that we are uh, all uh, recognize the importance of the uh, communication and communication mechanism at the national level. Um, some, con some countries shared uh, the challenges that they are facing, and some countries um, share the practices that uh, that is working uh, well uh, are shared. And then we uh, we all learned that uh, some uh, capacity building activities uh, led by um, ECH um, or um, CBD uh, capacity building activities that yeah, that is uh, helping the country country to, to um, have a better communication facility uh, and a mechanism. So I think that that would conclude discussion topic number two. Before moving to the discussion topic number three, but then we can show the discussion topic number three, which is the practical challenges in the use of the databases. Um, I would.